Okay, hello. So today we want to talk about the Doppler effect. So the Doppler effect is pretty easy, so long as you remember two things. The first thing is that a high pitch, okay, is equivalent to a high frequency, and that a low pitch is equivalent to a low frequency. So high pitch, ee, low pitch, ah. And then if we draw the waves for those, a high frequency is a lot of little small waves like this. And a low frequency ah, is a lot of waves like that. Okay. So if we have the Doppler effect, with the Doppler effect, if something moving is towards you, it is a high pitch. Okay. And if something is moving away from you, it is a low pitch. So that is the basis of everything. So it says to you, let's start looking at these questions here. The diagram below shows the position of two stationary listeners, P, here's P, and Q, relative to a car moving at a constant velocity towards the listener, Q. So it is going in this direction. So if it's moving towards you, this will be a high pitch, and this will be on the other side at P, the low pitch. So it says the hooter on the car emits sound. Listeners P and Q and the driver all hear the sound of the hooter. Which one of the following correctly describes the frequency of the sound heard by P and Q compared to that heard by the driver? So the driver hears the frequency of the source and these two are going to hear a different sound depending on whether it's moving away or towards you. So the frequency of the sound, a high pitch, is a high frequency. So who hears the high pitch and the high frequency? Q, which means that A and B are both possible here. But now P, it is moving away from P. So it is going to be hearing a lower pitch. So this one, the answer is A, because P hears a lower sound, Q hears a higher sound. Now it says to you, the wavelengths of light emitted by a distant star appear shorter when observed from Earth. From this we can conclude that the star is. Now, everybody wants to jump in here and say, oh no, um, the universe is expanding, it's going to be red shifted. But you've actually got to check what they're saying here. They're saying to you they appear shorter. So you must then think of the electromagnetic spectrum. Robin of York gained battles in vain. Yes, do you know these um, colors of the spectrum? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So this way goes to infrared, and this way goes to ultraviolet, okay? So on this end is the high frequency, and this end is the low frequency. So this side is the blue shift, and this side is the red shift. Now, high frequency, it means moving towards you. Low frequency means away. And this question has just said the wavelengths of light. So normally, we, when we talk about wavelengths, the wavelengths appear shorter. If you look at my original diagram up here, this would be a wavelength. Remember two uh, consecutive peaks or two consecutive points in phase is a wavelength. So if the wavelength is shorter, can you see this is a short wavelength, not a low. This is a short lambda, and this is a long lambda. So what is this actually telling us? If you've got a short wavelength, a short wavelength is in fact a high frequency, which means that the star is actually on the blue end of the spectrum. So it is blue shifted, and if the frequency is appearing higher, the object is actually moving towards you. So this is not the normal universe expansion. This is in fact something random like maybe a comet, but a comet is not a star. But we should all be a little bit worried if something is moving towards Earth because the things are appearing shorter. So the answer is A. Remember to use your um, red, orange, green, blue, indigo, violet to figure out which way something has been shifted. Then if we move on here, 
What is the next question? Also with an asteroid. The spectrum produced by a moving asteroid as observed from Earth indicated that the light has shifted towards the blue end. So the blue end means it's closer because it is a higher frequency. Blue has got a higher frequency than red. Remember I just showed you red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. This is high frequency and this is low frequency. So which one of the following combinations of the observed light and the distance is correct? So if it's blue shifted, it is shifted to a higher frequency. This gives us A and B. But then if the frequency is high, it is moving towards you. So the distance has to be decreasing. So the answer here must again be A. The frequency has increased and if the frequency increases, the object is moving towards you. Now it says to you, a police car with its siren on is traveling at a constant speed towards a stationary sound, sound detector. The siren emits waves, sound waves of frequency F and speed V. Which one of the following combinations best describes the frequency and the speed of the detected sound waves? Now in our Doppler effect formula, we've got the velocity of the source, the velocity of the listener, and the velocity of the sound, okay? And now they are asking you about the speed of the detected sound waves, which is their velocity. This is always going to remain the same unless we suddenly start transmitting the sound through some other medium like water or a solid. So the V must be the same because that depends on the temperature of the air, okay? That's all it depends on. But what is going to happen to the frequency? It is moving towards a stationary sound source. Okay. What is going to happen to the frequency? If we are moving towards you, you end up with the higher frequency. So the frequency must be greater than F because greater than F is just a different way of saying a higher frequency. So the answer here is D. So let's look at the next one. A police car with its siren wailing is moving away. So when we have away, we're going to have a low pitch at a constant speed. The siren emits a sound of constant frequency. Which one of the following characteristics associated with the sound of the siren as perceived by the listener is correct? Okay, the speed will remain the same because why? This only depends on the medium that we are traveling in. The frequency increases. No, this is not correct because a frequency is a increased frequency is an increased pitch, and we've decided it's moving away, and the pitch is going to decrease. What is happening to the wavelength? What is happening to the wavelength? Let's think about it. This is the wavelength, okay? And if this is the source and we are hearing a lower pitch, this is what a lower pitch looks like. So this would have been my wavelength of the original sound. And this will now be the wavelength of the new sound. So is it bigger or is it smaller? It is bigger. So the wavelength is increasing. So our final answer here will be B, 1, 3, and 4 only. Now it says a car travels at a constant velocity towards. This means that there's going to be a high pitch. The car's hooter emits a sound of constant frequency as it approaches the listener. Which one of the following statements regarding the frequency and the wavelength of the sound of the hooter is correct as observed by the listener? Both frequency and wavelength have decreased. No, this is not true. If you want the mathematical proof of this, it's v equals f lambda but the v is always constant for the same medium so if v is constant this means for a constant v if f increases it means there must be a decrease in wavelength so in physics we like to say they are inversely proportional so we cannot have the frequency and the wavelength both decreasing it has to be that one goes up and one goes down and if it's a high pitch the frequency has increased and the wavelength has decreased so you can see a is wrong because it doesn't show an inverse relationship and d is wrong because it doesn't show an inverse relationship and then c is wrong because if it's moving towards you the pitch is increasing 
not decreasing. Now we have a stationary passenger at a railway train. This is to a train approaching. This means the pitch is getting higher as the train approaches. Which one of the following is correct for the sound of the approaching train? Remember, we've got pitch and frequency. High pitch equals a high frequency. Okay, this is the with the little wave like this, not the ah. This is low pitch. Okay, so what is happening here? The train is coming towards you. It must have a higher pitch and a higher frequency. Which one of the following cannot be explained using the Doppler effect? Emission of electrons from a metal surface. This is the photoelectric effect, which is not, what, um, not the same as the Doppler effect. A flow meter, yes, this can be done to check your flow of red blood cells in your body. Red spectral lines from distant stars being shifted, yes, this is a Doppler effect. Observed frequency of light from moving bodies being higher than expected, yes, this is Doppler effect, which means that the answer A is the incorrect one. This is the photoelectric effect, which you learn about later in the year in grade 12. Now it says to you, light reaching the Earth from a galaxy moving away. So this is the conventional model of what's going on on the Earth after the Big Bang. The universe is expanding. So if light is moving, is shifted towards greater velocities, no, that's not true because the velocity just depends on the medium that you're traveling in. Higher frequency, no, remember, in the light spectrum. If we are shifted in red, we are shifted this way, which is the low frequency, and the violet is the high frequency. Okay, so if we are red shifted, we are shifted towards a lower frequency, so the velocity is not right, the higher frequency is not right. The low frequency, a low frequency is a long wavelength, so it looks to me like C is correct because a shorter wavelength, if you look on the other diagram, a shorter wavelength, here is the wavelength, that is a high frequency, here is the wavelength, lambda, that is a long wavelength, which would correspond with a low frequency. And then finally, the last of the questions, let's have a look here. A stationary observer is listening to the sound coming from a sound source. The listener hears a sound of a lower pitch. If we hear a lower pitch, it is moving away. When compared to that produced by the source, what can you conclude? The source is at rest, is stationary. So the observer is stationary. If the observer is stationary and the source is at rest, you will hear exactly the same um, sound because remember, it is due to relative motion of the sound source and the observer. The source is moving towards the listener. No, towards the listener increases pitch. The source is moving away from the listener. Yes, this is quite likely. There is an obstacle between the source and the listener. No, this might produce an echo. This might produce um, a, a decreased volume. Okay, or it might also cut the sound off totally. But an obstacle between the source and the listener will not affect uh, the sound waves, the pitch of the sound waves, only if the echo has something going on with it. Which one of the statements below about the Doppler effect is correct? The Doppler effect is only applicable to sound waves. No, that is not true because we know for short sure is um, proof of the expanding universe and we use electromagnetic radiation for that, which is completely not a sound wave. The Doppler effect can be used to explain the expanding universe. This is true. Electrons are emitted from a metal surface by means of the Doppler effect. No, this is the photoelectric effect. And then a stationary listener here has a lower pitch of an approaching vehicle. No, this would be a higher pitch. So the only one that is correct here is B. The Doppler effect can explain the expanding universe. Which one of the following is not an application of the Doppler effect? You just have to learn these. It is the answer is A, the light meter. That is telling you how bright or how intense the light is, which has got more to do with um, 
the amplitude of the light, the blood flow meter we know we use that to detect the flow of blood in your veins, the heartbeat of a fetus, and radar to speed trap you. These are all applications of the Doppler effect that you have to learn. So the light meter is the odd man out and that is the correct answer. It is not an application. Now this is the 2020 question. It says the siren of a police car moving in front of a truck. So we will draw a car. Here is the police car and it is moving in front of the truck. So we're going to call this block the T. The siren of a police car moving in front of a truck emits sound waves of a frequency F. Both vehicles are traveling at the same constant velocity. So if I have two objects, the V of the truck equals the V of the police car. If they are traveling at the same velocity, the distance between these two is going to remain constant. Okay, And it says the frequency of the sound heard by the driver of the truck is... It is going to be F. It is going to be exactly the same. Remember the Doppler effect means you must have relative motion. Something must be moving to have a Doppler effect. It must be moving away or it must be moving towards. If two objects are traveling at the same velocity in front of one in front and one behind, this distance is going to remain the same the whole time. It will not change and there is no relative motion. So the people in the truck, the people in the police car, they will hear the exact same frequency because there is no relative motion. And that is the end of my Doppler effect questions.